Around here, just another 70 plus degree day here in November may have us feeling spoiled because it feels like we're headed into summer rather than into winter. But maybe this winter won't be so bad after all. Over the past month, the KDK weather team has been hard at work on our annual winter weather forecast. Let's do this, Ray. Petland kicks it off. When you put together a long term forecast, the first thing you do is look for the most likely storm track, the bigger pattern that will be the driver for the whole season. From there, you try to figure out the finer details. Last year, we predicted winter to start late. That happened. We predicted frequent bouts of rain and snow. That happened, but it came mostly as rain. We were looking for a January and February cold snap. That certainly didn't happen, and that's where we got the kibosh put on our snowfall. So we got some things right and certainly some things wrong. And this year we have a major player in our atmosphere to help us determine the storm track. And for that, let's send it over to Kristen Emery. Ray, what's happening down in the Pacific Ocean near the equator often plays a big role in our winter weather pattern here at home. Now during an El Nino pattern, trade winds weaken, leading to unusually warm water way down in the tropical Pacific. This forces a southward shift of the jet stream. During La Nina, the opposite, there are unusually cold conditions way down in the tropical Pacific, and that displaces the jet stream farther north. That can lead to a wetter, colder winter for the northern U.S. and a drier, warmer winter for the south. Now we were in a neutral pattern much of last year, but sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific have dropped, prompting a La Nina advisory. And there's a 75% chance that those conditions will stick around this winter. So what does that mean for us? Mary Hours breaks it down. Kristen, a La Nina year could bring a mix of things and it only takes one bad snowstorm to push records. But let's take a look back at the past decade to see how we have fared. We've had four La Nina years since 2010. During the winter of 2010 and 2011, there was a strong La Nina presence and above average snowfall. The following winter, La Nina was moderate with snowfall just slightly below normal. Fast forward to the winter of 2016 2017. La Nina was weak with a below average snowfall of 32 inches, but it was also weak the following winter and we ended up with nearly 60 inches of snow, which is way above average. We're expecting a moderate La Nina this winter, which probably means a little warmer than average, but just how much warmer. Ron Smiley has a closer look at this winter's temperature forecast. You know, Mary, in addition to La Nina, we actually have another player that arguably impacts our winter weather even more. It's the North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO for short. It's basically a measure of a persistent area of high pressure. It's always there off of the East Coast. You can actually see a little bit of that right there. It's what explorers use to help them navigate across the Atlantic. A positive NAO number means warmer air, and that's likely what we're going to see over the course of our winter. A strengthening NAO that's already positive. So with that in mind, we're going to forecast a slightly warmer than average winter. Here's the breakdown. I think winter will start off warm with December temperatures about a degree and a half warmer than average. January temperatures could be somewhere around a half degree warmer than average also. And February is looking just slightly above average, maybe a few tenths of a degree or so warmer than that average. All right, Ray, I'm going to send it back over to you. So go out big with our winter snow forecast. What do you got? There's not much big in this forecast, Ron, but it is winter in Pittsburgh, so we will get something. The past couple of years have been exceptionally wet, not necessarily white, but certainly wet. And that changed this summer with drought conditions unfolding. And that overall dry trend looks like it's going to continue, at least for the next couple of months. The warm temperatures Ron mentioned are also going to be a big factor in how much snow we see. So here we go. The rest of this month and December are likely to come with below average snowfall, especially since it's still going to be on the dry side. So we're calling for two inches for the rest of November and four inches for the month of December. January and February will likely be our snowiest months, but that's really not saying much since we're expecting below average snowfall then as well. Eight inches is what we're expecting in January. As the moisture trends start to increase a bit, we're looking for another eight inches to fall in February. March, well, that's brought us some big snowfalls in the past. Not so much this year. We're going to probably see more rain than snow, so we're expecting just three inches to accumulate there. So if you've been keeping tabs, that takes us up to a grand total of 25 inches for this winter, which is well below the 41-inch average we have for this area.